Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So I've been alluding to this lately and it's something I've been thinking about for a long, long time. We are going to do our first ever guest appearance on the weekly vlog and it's gonna be a regular series appearing on into the future. Please help me in welcoming James Hefke. What's up, James? Um, this is James speaking. It is this January 16th, around eight o'clock at night, January 16th, 2019. So you're making this video because you're making changes to your life and you wanna hold yourself accountable. This morning, you weighed in at 334 pounds. Um, you are 5'9", and uh, starting to become a prisoner of your body. Uh, your knees, uh, that's the first thing. The knees are, they hurt, you know? And uh, you're 27. Um, it shouldn't be like that, man. Got one pair of pants that fit you, a pair of jeans that you're <laughs> Or teammates make fun of you about and with kind of humility but it's the truth you don't want to walk yourself into XXL store anymore because it's uncomfortable because you're embarrassed and it sucks what is this the 15th time throughout your life I don't know 10 15 I don't know where we've started this and it doesn't last. Life sucks, dude. You've got to fix this, man. You're going to fix this. All right, so James, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank yeah. you for having me. We've been talking about doing this for a while, huh? We have. How did you and I meet? Like, how did, how did you end up here on my couch in my living room? So there's actually two stories for that. The first story is a 12-step uh, meeting for drinking and drugs. Uh -huh. um, I had shared at that meeting that uh, my number one drug dealer is the Golden Arches of McDonald's. And uh, you approached me a couple weeks later. Yeah. Told me about how you also um, suffer with food addiction. Yeah. And that uh, you wrote a book on it. Yeah. And I remember looking at you thinking, like, there's no way this woman is... <laughs> Really a food addict, you know, and you're like, yeah, I lost 60 pounds, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I bought the book, uh -huh. I read it, and uh, I approached you at uh, one of those later meetings, and we got lunch, and... Yeah. Can I say that I remember you saying that? I remember in the meeting when you said, my real drug dealer is the Golden Arches of McDonald's, and I, I remember thinking, oh, and, and for me, um, I tend not to approach people who said, because it, it does sort of feel like I'm not, you know, like, hi, you're, you're overweight and I'd like to help you lose weight. Like, you know, and it's sort of like, uh, no, you know, right. like I've been overweight. And, uh, first of all, they know, <laughs> they don't need you to like inform them that they're my, and, um, there's, it feels like there's no good intro. There's no good way to do that. Right. So I said nothing. And then the next week I said nothing. And then the, the week after that, I had this feeling of like, I don't know, man. I just wanted to approach you. But you said there's a second story. There is. And I haven't heard that story yet, right? Correct. We've been saving it till right now right. on camera. Uh, okay, what's the second story? So about two weeks before you approached me, uh, I met my new nurse practitioner who deals with uh, psychiatric medication. Okay. So mental illness is also a part of my story. You know, I've And we're going to talk about that. Yes. Yeah, totally. So, and I told her when she started asking probing questions to get to know me and all that, I told her on how I'm, I, I do uh, um, active recovery. and uh -huh. For drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol. Uh -huh. But that my, if I were to rank my addictions, that food was my number one. Yeah. And I've been powerless and totally unmanageable for my entire life. Yeah. And she said that she was also a food addict. Really? Yes. And that uh, she read this book. And uh, she wrote it on a, on a post-it note and said that, you know, I really think you should read this book, James. This woman 
created this company and, and this, this program on how to fight food addiction. And I thought to myself, well, I'm definitely gonna look it up and all that. So I misplaced the, the, post-it, the note. post-it note. But it was, it said Bright Line Eating. It said Bright Line Eating by Susan Pierce Thompson. And, uh, and then you approached me And then you couldn't later. remember what it was. Exactly. You were so, like, what was that thing? Exactly. And I remember, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my, my nurse practitioner who said she lost 100 pounds from Bright Line Eating <laughs> told me about how she did this program and how I should read this book. That's so great. Especially because I really trusted her because she was all about, you know, she's a nurse practitioner that focuses on, on the brain and, and, and this, the psychiatry on things, you know? So um, I think it was the week after you and I first met, I had my next appointment with her. Uh-huh. And that first question I asked her, I was like, her name's Bits. And I was like, Bits, so who was, uh, who was that author that you told me that I should pick up her book? I misplaced that post note. And when she was saying Susan Pierce Thompson, I said it at the same time. And I told her, <laughs> and she was just like, oh my gosh, that's crazy, and, and all that. And, awesome. and it was like at that moment, I was like, there's got to be something to this, you know. That's if... awesome. But you didn't like um, start. Correct. You just kind of so a couple few weeks went by, yeah. and you were kind of like aware there was this thing. Maybe so. What was happening? Like the the feeling of like I'm going to do this was building, exactly. but you didn't start. Exactly. So surrender for, the, for addictions. I believe that you truly have to surrender them. Yeah. That you just have to be like I'm. I'm just. I'm done. I'm. I'm. I'm not doing this anymore. And I did that with the drugs and alcohol, but I couldn't do that with the food. It took me about two and a half months until I was truly ready. I, I had a moment, I, I stepped on the scale, I looked down at the number, and I'm just like, just, just like it. Pure... Would, you, would you share with people what Absolutely. that number was? So when I first weighed in, so I'm a little, I'm five foot nine, and I weighed in at 372 pounds. Mm. And I'm barely five foot nine, so being 372, two pounds is very difficult. It's, uh, I was starting to have health problems and just looking at that number, pure disgust, you know, just pure mm-hmm. and utter like, you're killing yourself slowly. You're killing yourself on an installment plan, James. Like you're in that, you're in that true f- fork, in the ro- uh, f- fork in the road for your life. Which path are you taking? You've done so well with that one part of your life with the drugs and alcohol now do you want to do that with the food? Yeah. And I was just like, I'm done. And I've and I've I was weighing myself before that too. And and I remember I had a physical back in June and I weighed 355 pounds and just thinking like, damn, that's or that's that's high, but yeah. okay, whatever. But seeing that 372, it just burned into my brain. Mm. Like it's it's done, man. Like you can't do this. You are killing yourself. And James, how old are you? I'm 28 years old. You're 28 years old. Yes. So already feeling the fork in the road for your life at I mean, 28 years old. Um, I had a sleep study done over mm-hmm. the, the summer where uh, on average, like I knew I had sleep apnea. I just, just put two and two together because I was waking up exhausted. I, I so sluggish, everything like that. But uh, I was waking up on average 82 times an hour. What? 82 times. Oh my gosh, because the fat was exactly. choking off your windpipe. Exactly. And... Wow. Which affects everything in your life, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, if you can't get rest, you can't focus, you can't, it was, it was destroying Which me. leads to more eating. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So James, mental health challenges have been in the mix for you. Can you yes. describe your background with that? Absolutely. So uh, I've had, I've lived with depression and anxiety since I was a little kid. Um, first instances were around, I was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. My parents got divorced and... You know, I just remember I couldn't even sleep in my own bed by myself because mm-hmm. the anxiety was so bad. And it's progressively gotten worse throughout the years. Um, uh, I've been on the brink of suicide. Uh, I've been, uh, I've had two different stints in psychiatric units. Uh, mm-hmm. On the outside, I look like I can, I portray myself pretty well. I can put on a good, mm-hmm. put on a good face. But in reality, I'm usually struggling pretty bad down deep. Yeah. And uh, it brought me to my lowest point, which was at the end of August this year, where... Uh, August of which year? Of 2019. 19, yes, okay. Yes, 2019. And uh, I was mental hygiene arrested from my house. Mm-hmm. Anybody who doesn't know what that is, that's where uh, somebody calls 911 on you because you're, you're, 
you're acting suicidal. You were sending text messages to my therapist saying goodbye. Yeah, yeah basically. I was, I was talking. Not knowing that your therapist would have to it, report that to the authorities. It, it had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. So August 2019, yeah. you're mental hygiene arrested. Yep. And at that point, you were doing drugs and alcohol as Correct. well, yes. sort of self-medicating. Yeah, that's that's what I thought I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, because people were re were approaching me saying, "James, I think you might have some problems with drugs and alcohol." You know, I was I was stealing pills from my grandmother who's dying from Alzheimer's. She's my best friend, but I thought to myself, I truly thought I needed these more than she did because mm. they would help me escape. I was solely just drinking and 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 using drugs to escape my life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take it anymore. From the minute I woke up to the minute I went to bed, it was pure hell. Like that's mm -hmm. really the only word that I can describe it. So I was doing that stuff, or that's what I was telling myself, mm -hmm. was I was self-medicating myself. But uh, that opened the doors of, uh, of a fellowship program that's absolutely changed my life to where that you and I crossed paths and mm -hmm. where I'm now sitting on this couch right now. Yeah, so you got clean and sober. Yes. What's your uh, date of? August 28th. August 28th. 2019. Okay. And um, did your eating escalate at that point? It did. When you put down the drugs and alcohol? It did, yeah. yes. Um, it was actually the worst it ever was because I thought I was living a sober life because I just wasn't drinking and doing drugs, but I replaced the drinking and doing drugs with extreme binging. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a person that would uh, go to McDonald's, have the, the route planned in my head, leaving work or from my house. And if I didn't spend anything more than $25, I was upset with myself, mm. solely on myself. That's, and I was only buying food for me. And it could be after I just had dinner with a friend or uh, wasn't even hungry, just I was maybe I was bored or I was in my own head. And, and the food addiction, uh, it allowed me to escape. That's what I was doing, you know, I was, it was uh, an insatiable hunger that I would have that I could never scratch that itch though. Mm -hmm. And never could scratch that itch. I remember thinking where I'd, I'd be so uncomfortably full from eating way too much food and still think like, I wish I can go get this right now. I wish I could have that. Mm -hmm. It's like the yearning, but it never gets satisfied. Exactly. You keep eating, exactly. but there's this promise that exactly. some bite of food or some some something is going to satisfy it. It never gets satisfied. But it, it would get satisfied at, by actually eating it. So uh, while I was unwrapping the, the fast food burger or, you know, putting the fries in my mouth, I was free at that specific moment. I would remember because that's all I was focusing on was eating that food at that specific time right then and there. I didn't have to worry about all the other crap that I was dealing with in my head. I wasn't mm -hmm. worrying about all the stressors and all that, but just in that specific time frame, frame I would be free. Mm. Well, a false sense of free. What do you think the relationship is among the mental health challenges you've had and drug and alcohol addiction and food addiction? Like, it's like a big soupy right. mess in there. What, what do you think is going on in there? Well, I have a personality for everything. I'm a zero, 100 type of person. All or nothing. All or nothing. There's totally. never, there's, there's no balance for in between. Mm -hmm. I've always had a problem with that. So if my depression and anxiety is really bad, mm -hmm. then the drug and alcohol abuse is pedal to the metal. Because uh -huh. uh, I'm not, I'm putting 100% effort into that. Uh -huh. And I'm doing whatever I have to, to suppress the feelings in my head. Um, and then where's the food addiction in there? Same exact thing. If I can't get drugs or alcohol at that specific moment, the food's going to, is gonna at least be okay for me for that specific moment. But the food, the food addiction, I don't even need to be deep into my depression and anxiety for that to happen. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I've realized is that even if I'm feeling okay, I would still binge on food. You know, that mm -hmm. was, food was always my friend. Food was always there for me. Food was always consistent. You know, it was, mm -hmm. it was always gonna satisfy me in a specific way. I, I would never feel alone because, with, with that because I'm a very personal person. Mm -hmm. if you, I have a bunch of friends, I have a big family, all that, but I've always felt alone my entire life. You know, I could be in a room full of a thousand people and f feel totally non-connected to anybody. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I always felt connected to food. If we go back to your childhood, you yes. said the depression and anxiety started when you were 10 years old. Were yes. you heavy then? Oh yes. When I've, did you develop your weight problem? I've, ever since I can remember, like there's, if I go through old pictures, mm -hmm. I was always 
chunky. You know, I was yeah. always, I remember as a young kid having to buy the husky jeans and. Mm -hmm. Are your parents overweight? Yes. Your family? Yep. So you've never been in a right size body. You've been overweight since you can remember, Correct. right? Your whole family is overweight. Correct. Do you have any sense of what your goal weight might be? You're five foot nine. What are you thinking? For right now, I want to hit the below 200 mark. Uh -huh. So like 199, I think I would feel some sort of like, you know, like that's crazy. You know, like <laughs> that's, because I, I can't even remember the last time I was under 200 pounds. Totally. And if you sink into that, what is the feeling for you? of imagining being under 200 pounds. What does that feel like? There's, I, there's not even a word to describe that because my sense of identity has always been being the overweight person. Yeah. I've, I've always been overweight. I've never felt normal. You know, I've never felt accepted in my own body for myself. So I, I can't even begin to imagine what that feeling would be like once I hit that goal weight, to be completely honest. Do you look at people who are skinny or in a right size body as being different than you? Do you do you sort of fantasize about what their life is like? Absolutely. What do you think about when you look when you think about that? Freedom. Like yep. they're free. Like, if I want if I want to go to an amusement park right now, I can't. You know, mm -hmm. if I wanted to participate in sports, I can't do that. Um, like I want to go skiing. I like to ski. I used to ski. I'm too heavy to go skiing now. So like it's. If, I feel like kind of like a prisoner, to be completely honest. So then you started the Brightline Eating Boot Camp. I did. When did you start? Uh, December 20th. December 20th, 2019. Yes, just, 2019, just recently. correct. Yeah. Right before the holiday season. <laughs> How was that for you, going through the holidays on it, your first few days? It was, to be honest, it was easy because I was so motivated. So uh -huh. I was still, I was running off that adrenaline, like I'm doing this, like nothing's going nice. to slip me up or anything like that. So... It was, and it's good. right now, sitting here, what day are you on right now? 23. Day 23. Yeah. And how often are you weighing yourself? Once a week. Once a week? Yeah. On your last weigh-in, how much weight did you lost so far total? 25 pounds. 25.3 pounds. 25 pounds in less than 23 days. Correct. How does that feel for you? It's great. Like, it's just awesome, you know? Like, it's... <laughs> So, Susan, to be completely honest, I had almost accepted that I was just going to die from obesity. You know, that why don't you just keep eating the way that you're doing? Why don't you keep living the lifestyle that you were living? Because I couldn't imagine having a life different from that. That this is what God intended for me was to, to be a statistic in the, in the ob obesity epidemic in, of North America and so it's like, it's just surreal, you know, seeing the weight coming off and, and I can already feel changes, you know, like my, I've already had to go a couple belt loops in and, um, I'm not huffing and puffing like I was walking down the hallway. Like I remember at work walking from my, my cube to where we would, uh, fill our water bottles up and it would be daunting to me. It would truly be like, oh my God, I really don't want to do this. It's going to, my back's going to hurt. To walk down the hallway. Down, down the hallway, probably. 70 yards it was a decent little walk but i mean it's just a straight walk down some carpet mm. and i would come back after filling my water and be like i just went on a jog sweating and my knees hurt starting to hurt and mm. and just uncomfortable and the amount of times i would sit down in that chair and think to yourself like this isn't right you know this isn't normal you're 28 years old you this is the prime of your life mm. right it's, prime age and you're out of breath coming back from filling your water up man what's why are you doing this to yourself so you're on day 23 mm -hmm. of bright line eating what's been the hardest thing so far what's been your biggest challenge well we were talking about this a little earlier and i've been very regimented on how i've prepared my food mm -hmm. and uh the salad portion has been the most difficult to be completely honest so eight ounces of salad eight at ounces night? Eight ounces of salad, yes. I'm, I sometimes have to force that down. So we were talking about this earlier, <laughs> and I uncovered that you're doing eight ounces of lettuce. Yes. Eight ounces of lettuce. And we saved this yes. for this 
thing right here. Can I grab the Brightline Eating book of for course. a second, James? Yes. Okay, I'll bear back. All right, this is on page 145 of the book, Brightline Eating. I remember that. Okay. Please don't make the mistake of thinking that eight ounces of salad means eight ounces of plain lettuce. You'd be chewing all night. You'll want to start off with a base of about two to three ounces of a heavy lettuce like romaine or iceberg or one to two ounces of a lighter lettuce like spinach or spring mix. Then add salad, salad vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, red onion, mushrooms, peppers, sprouts, jicama, beets, celery, etc. on top until the total weight equals eight ounces. But you haven't been adding any other vegetables. You're eating no. eight ounces of lettuce. Eight ounces of lettuce. And it's hard. It, it, yeah. It's, it's your biggest challenge. It's by, by far. I mean, it, like the preparation and all that, that's <laughs> fine. I like to cook, you know, but like I, I was telling you the story that I went to a local grocery store for the first time buying, buying my food and I just bought one bag of lettuce and thinking like, oh, maybe this is going to be good for three, four days and and did not realize how much lettuce actually eight ounces is. And so if Susan Pierce Thompson tells you, James, <laughs> one to two ounces of lettuce and then add other vegetables, will you listen? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think I'm ever going to eat ounce, eight ounces of lettuce ever again. Okay. Biggest challenge solved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just saw I went to Target and uh, bought my food scale. And I got a daily journal, but I couldn't find the five-year journal. So I'm going to head to Walmart, see if I can find that. Um, if not, I'll probably just have to order it off Amazon. No big deal. And then I'm going to head to the grocery store and get my food and start BLE tomorrow. Let's go. So what have you loved most about Brightline Eating so far? The, about the boot camp? The routine. The routine. Sure. Yes. Uh, the writing in the journals, the uh, looking in the fridge and knowing that I have everything set for the next day because I'm kind of a control freak in a way. So like not knowing what I'm going to eat the next day and having it not prepared, for me, I know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to open up that, that little sabotager thinking like, oh, you could just, you can just eyeball this amount. You can just do this. You can just do that which then that all, always snowballs into totally mm -hmm. getting off the program. So mm -hmm. forcing myself to make that three meal a day routine, having everything prepared the night before, writing down what I'm going to eat, all that, I, I've actually grown to love it. So there's a piece that's coming over exactly. you. Exactly. It's like it's all exactly. working out. It's all set. Yes. And you're loving that. Yes. What's been the most surprising thing for you so far? Uh, the the com camaraderie, for sure. Say more. So... If anybody's watching this video isn't already doing a boot camp or hasn't done a boot camp, one of the staple pieces of it is the Facebook groups. Um, they're private Facebook groups where it's only people who are currently doing the boot camp uh -huh. and who have signed up. And it's absolutely amazing. The It's like your safe zone. You know, if you want to post anything that's been challenging you or... Maybe you feel like you're going to go off the rails or anything like that. You have people there that are going to help you. You have yeah. people there that you can, that you, they, they can be your shoulder to cry on or, or, and they know what you're going through. Have you been posting? Oh, there? yes. Oh, yeah? yes. Yeah. How often do you post? What do you say? Uh, I would say I post, it all depends, but I would say I would post twice a week. Mm hmm Yeah. But then the responses that come in. Oh, they're incredible. Really... They're mm -hmm. incredible. Sweet. And do you comment on other people's I do. posts? Do you yes. support other people? Yep. Do you feel like you're getting to know people I, in that group? Absolutely. So and sweet. it's incredible how fast it grew. When I when I when I joined it was only I think like forty people. Mm -hmm. and now there's hundreds. Mm -hmm. But it's capped. Yes. Like that's it. Now you're yep. all going through the boot camp together. Yep. Sweet. And so that was surprising. You didn't expect that. No. Because I mean Every single time in the past that I tried to change my relationship with food and the way I ate, I did it by myself, you know? Or I would hire some super expensive coach that, yeah, he would, this person would have my back, but there's a, there was a gain for that person, you know, that I was paying that person on a, usually a monthly basis. So I, I just usually just did it by myself. And then when I would, when that inner sabotager would win out, 
I was only by myself. I had nobody to talk to about it or the people that I would talk to about it, they couldn't understand what I was going through. They just would look at me like, you don't have the willpower just to say no? Mm. And how, why? Like, I thought you wanted it this bad and, and all that. And it's like, if I, and then I would start believing them. Am I just a weak person? Am I, yeah. I, how, I'm a pretty smart guy. Like, I feel like I, I am. Like, how can you not figure this out yourself? And you know, this program has totally revolutionized that, that idea for me. It's, it's not a me program. It's a we program. It's, we're doing this together. Mm -hmm. That's, that unity is so helpful. So, James, we wanted to shoot this vlog so people could get to know you and we could sort of get a baseline starting uh, sort of here's James Hefke vlog going and then we're going to follow up. So you're going to keep doing the boot camp um, and keep going with your journey and we're going to keep tracking you. Uh, let's talk about the things that uh, we're going to track, right? Okay. So we're going to check in with you and um, we'll, we'll find out kind of what's alive for you in that moment. But in the meantime, what are some of the things that you think we should track like every time? What are we going to be tracking for you? Mindset. Your mindset. What yes. do you mean by that? How I'm feeling. If am I just white knuckling this, or yeah. do I still have that that inner security that this is this is the right path? For How me? are you doing now? How's your mindset right now? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. True. Hundred percent. You feel like deep identity shift. Absolutely. You are a bright liner. You do bright liner. One hundred percent. All right. Okay. So we'll track your mindset. What yeah. else? Physically, how I how I your start weight? changing. Yeah. Because uh, wait, and what else? Like what? Uh, pictures. Okay. Um, Sleep apnea. Yes. Has it gotten any better? A little bit. Uh, okay. But that one's going to be very interesting to me, to be completely honest. Because yeah. you know, I even asked my doctor. He was, hey, do you think if I lose, if I totally change my life around, is it going to go away? He's like, with numbers like yours, probably not, but maybe. Uh -huh. So that'd be a that's a cool goal that I want to hit. Yeah. Um, what about mental health? That too, yes, absolutely. Have you noticed a difference so far in oh your mood? Oh my gosh, it's... That's a yes? Yeah, I'm like, yes, it, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So you're feeling happier? It, I f somewhat at peace, you know, it's... Mm. I w happy, yes, moments there's of happiness, but I don't have that inner chaos going on right now. Mm -hmm. just, if we're living in the moment right now, my mind is okay. You know, I can be at, I'm at peace with myself. I'm okay at this specific present moment. I was like that when I woke up. I was like that all day yesterday. I was like all that, like that day, the day before. And I expect to be like that tomorrow. Which means you don't need to eat excess food to change how you feel. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't need to use food to medicate anymore. Right. So we'll be following up with you. Absolutely. Okay. James. It's so exciting yeah, to do the first vlog, really introducing is. someone other than SPT. James Hefke, welcome <laughs> to the Bright Line Eating World. Thank you, Susan. All right. Thanks for coming on, man. You're so very sweet to talk with you. Absolutely. And that's the weekly vlog. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week.